Will Goldstein here, thekingscourt.com. So again, subscribe. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been subscribing. Numbers have been going up here, so uh, that's good. People are listening to the videos, which is exactly what I wanted. So, and uh, to help other people, and so if you you can spread that word by just clicking that little subscribe button <laughs> down there. Uh, also, you can always check out my music again at the about page of this channel. Just there's some links there. So this is part again of the World Unity series. Title of this video is Shinto Gods Called Kami in Japan. And subtitle would be Powerful Polytheistic, Polytheistic Spiritual Nature Gods of the Far East. Whoa, so we're in for, <laughs> in for a treat. Okay, so first of all, you know, the colors of Japan are <laughs> red um, is considered the basic color. Um, the symbol for Japan is really the Tori, and that's a gate, uh, the Tori gate, and um, that's the, I think everybody knows what that is, but I'll describe it as time goes on. Those are usually red, but sometimes white, so I have red and white. Um, as far as um, how many Shinto practitioners there are, mostly there in Japan. There's about three million, uh, but there's some outside of Japan. So now I'm gonna get right into it. So a, to a Tori is a traditional Gap Japanese gate, most commonly found at the entrance of or within the sh uh, Shinto sh shrine, where it is symbolically marks the transition from the mundane to the sacred. So you're going out of the mundane world into the sacred world. Their definition of sacred is interesting. So, but anyway, an example being the Tori gateway to the Itsukushima shrine in Hiroshima prefecture, Japan. Tori mark the entrance to the, the Shinto shrines and their recognized symbols of the religion. So that's the basic symbol. So Shinto is a religion from Japan, classified as Far East Asian. Uh, practitioners regard um, Shinto as their indigenous religion, and it's basically a nature religion. Uh, so practitioners can be called Shintoists, but adherents to the religion rarely use that name themselves. There's no central authority in Shinto. Um, there's a diversity of belief and practices amongst the practitioners, so there's real, really no central authority behind it. Uh, Shinto is polytheistic as opposed to monotheistic, so, and that means basically the belief or doctrine that there are multiple gods, small g, or deities, and, anim and it's also an animistic religion, and that's a belief in innumerable spiritual beings concerned with human affairs and capable of helping or harming human interest. Okay, so Shinto revolves around supernatural entities called kami, and that could be translated as God, Lord, or deity. But it also includes other forces of nature like the sun, okay, uh, both good and evil, uh, which because of their superiority superiority or divinity become objects of reverence and respect. In other words, there's supernatural nature beings that are much more powerful than humans and they they could be good or bad and their eye can, can help us or harm us and so we better pay respect to them. That's basically it in a nutshell. So um, the kami are believed to inhabit all things including forces of nature. So like I said, the sun, that would be the most dominant one. So, well, I'll get into that later. And prominent landscape locations. <clears throat> the kami, <coughs> kami are worshiped at Kamadana, and, and that's a miniature shrine, the center of daily worship in a household or a shop. So they set up this little miniature shrine where they do their worship. There are household shrines, family shrines, and then there's Jinja public shrines, and, and the place where the spirit of a deity is enshrined or to which it is summoned. 
Okay, so they can summon through divination the spirit at these at these public shrines uh, called Jinja public shrines. Uh, historically, Jinja were located in places of great natural beauty. Um, in modern times, uh, urban shrines have become more common. So the Jinja shrines are staffed by priests, so they do have priests there, and they're known as Kanushi, a person responsible for the maintenance of the shrine, the Jinja shrine, as well as for leading worship of a given kami. So there's all these different kami spirits that are associated with these shrines, and that uh, priest is there to lead the worship in that. They oversee offerings of food and drink to the specific kami enshrined at that particular location. So this is done to cultivate harmony between humans and kami and to solicit the latter's blessing. In other words, <laughs> you're, you have dominion over this region and we are offering this to you. This is very ancient in its concepts. I mean, this goes way back into... <laughs> You know, the, uh, uh, all the ancient worships that ended up happening in Judaism and other cultures, you know, back then, uh, you know, with the, the Babylonian gods and all the bull gods and, and everything that existed in ancient worship and sacrifices. But anyway, so other common rituals include the Kagura dances, which means entertaining the gods. Okay, so that's what they're doing, entertaining gods. It's a sacred Japanese dance and music ritual dedicated to the gods of Shinto. Since ancient times, it's been performed at regional festivals at a ceremony to pray for a good harvest and to ward off natural disasters. So, yeah, it's very, this is very, very ancient in its concepts. Okay, so the rites of passage has to do with as expressed in uh, Shinto by the Shijiki Gosan or 753 festival on November 15th. It's the occasion for boys of five years and girls of three and seven years of age to visit the shrine to give thanks for Kami's protection and to pray for their healthy growth. On January 15th, uh, the adults have that same practice, I guess. So there are seasonal festivals at each Shinto shrine several times each year, including the Spring Festival. There's the Japanese names for them, but I'm just giving you the Spring Festival, the Prayer for a Good Harvest Festival, the Autumn Festival, the Har Harvest Festival, and the Divine Procession, which is called Shinko Sai. Public shrines facilitate forms of divination um, that are required for setting the dates for many major festivals. Ritual leaders invite certain divinatory kami to be in attendance uh, as the diviner kindles a sacred fire on which to heat up a turtle shell. Specialists then read the relationship of the cracks to lines and characters uh, pre-dawn on, on the shell. So they're summoning the spirits of the kamis through this practice that they're doing with a sacred fire and uh, involving the turtle shell. So the sacred objects in the Shinto religion in which the kami reside are typically mirrors, um, magatama or kama-shaped kama stones or swords. These items also make up the three sacred treasures of the Japanese imperial household. These objects are carefully preserved in the honden, and that's the heart of the shrine complex. Uh, and connected to the rest of the shrine, but usually raised above it, the Honden, and protected from public access and are never displayed to visitors. So that's a part of the shrine that you can't go into. Sacred objects of, called the Honden. Sacred objects of Japanese culture are the Imperial Regalia of Japan, also called the Three Sacred Treasures of Japan. They're said to include a mirror called a Yata no Gam <laughs> Kagami, representing the virtue of wisdom. Oh, well, they have a concept of wisdom. A sword called a kusanagi for valor, and a jewel, yes, Yasakani uh, no Makatama for benevolence. So that's 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 that does bring us interesting. That that side of it brings out 
some of the more spiritual nature that, you know, if you go on with this video, you usually don't see so much. But that does bring out the virtue of wisdom, valor, and benevolence. Okay, so, um, o Omamori are Japanese amulets, uh, commonly sold at Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples. So there is a mix in Japan of the Buddhist and the, the Shinto. So and, the, and they're dedicated to particular Shinto kami, as well as Buddhist figures, and are said to provide various forms of luck and protection to the religion's adherents. So people wearing the amulets called Amamori. So Shinto places a major conceptual focus on ensuring uh, purity, but in a different sort of sense, largely by cleaning practices such as ritual washing and bathing, especially before worship. So it's mostly seen, purification is mostly seen in terms of washing your body and bathing, okay, before you go to worship. So there's little emphasis placed on specific moral codes or particular afterlife beliefs. They don't really have any moral codes, nor do they really believe in an afterlife. Um, although the dead are deemed capable of becoming kami, so the, those spirits, okay, that are <laughs> that are worshipped. So they do sort of as a transition in there where some do and some don't, and maybe, <laughs> who knows, maybe if they were a particular um, you know, wise or something on earth, then maybe they could become a kami, I don't really know. Religion has no single creator, so there's no real single god. Like I said, it's a bunch of gods or nature gods, spirit gods, um, and there's no real specific doctrine, and there's a, just a diverse range of local and regional, regional forms. So pretty much each individual area, you know, pretty much establishes what they believe. Kami veneration has been traced back to 300 BCE and 300 CE, B, um, CE. So it goes way back so that you can see how they, the, the whole concept of these spirits, um, you know, and <laughs> because, you know, back that far, that was a lot of what was being addressed in the, in the, in the world. And so, uh, you know, somehow they are participating in that, that source of knowledge. You know, for example, you have ideas of, you know, well, this, that's not that's right around the time that the the Bible was put together. You know, the Old Testament happening, uh, the you know Enoch and the Watchers and all that kind of stuff was happening back around in that time. So it's it's not too hard to see that how you know they could come up. However, they're in the Far East, so far, far, far away. But there was a lot of trade that was going, and and these religions were passing through to the East you know, as, as expressed in some of the other videos. So religious syncretization made Kami worship in Buddhism functionally inseparable for a while, a process called Shinbutsu Shugo. The Kami came to be viewed as part of Buddhist cosmology for a while, <laughs> you'll find out. The earliest uh, written tradition regarding Kami worship was recorded in the eighth century Kojiki and Nuhun Shoki. In the ensuing centuries, Shinbutsu Shugo was adopted by Japan's imperial household. During the Meiji era, 1868 to 1912, Japan's nationalist leadership expelled Buddhist influence from Kami worship and formed state Shinto, which some historians regard as the origin of Shinto as a distinct religion. So it was kind of like uh, you know, this ancient concepts having to do with the kami, and then you have this mingling between the Buddhists and the and the Shinto, and then finally the expulsion of the Buddhists, and then finally the Shinto becoming the state religion. Shrines came uh, under growing uh, <coughs> government influence, and citizens were encouraged to worship the emperor as kami. With the formation of the Japanese Empire in the early 20th century, Shinto was exported to other areas of East Asia. So there are some uh, Shinto outside of Japan, but not many. 
Following Japan's defeat in World War II, which is a big one for Shinto, Shinto was formally separated from the state. The solution was the Humanity Declaration. This was an announcement issued by the Meiji Emperor Hirohito on the 1st of January 1946, in which he denied any and all claim to divinity. He said basically, because prior to that, for a period of time, they believed that he was divine, a divine kami, the emperor. So he asserted his status as merely just being a human being and debunked the idea that the Japanese held a holy mandate to rule the world. So he lost, they, they lost the war in World War II, so obviously if he's God and he lost the war, war um, you know, we're no longer... <laughs> We didn't win, right? So how can we rule the world? So the Japanese emperor is no longer viewed as a god, like I just said, while deeply revered as the descendants of the sun goddess. So he is revered as sort of like the, the sun goddess, which I'll get into in a second. Emperors were never worshipped as living gods except for a short period during the build-up to World War II. They are getting enthusiasm, you know, for winning in World War II, so they started uh, declaring that their emperor uh, was, you know, a kami and, you know, to be worshipped. So Amaterasu is the goddess of the sun, so now we're getting into the whole idea of sun, which is really, uh, you know, I think that's on their flag, you know, so uh, that's, you know, the whole idea is now you are getting to <laughs> the god of the sun. Okay, so that's as close as they get to, um, you know, what other religions may have. I mean, because throughout humanity in different religions, you know, some people say, well, they worship the sun. Some people say, well, yeah, they worship the sun, but they really worship the god who made the sun. So... You know, I'm not sure what to say. They they use the word goddess of the sun in Japanese mythology for Amaterasu. But in, she's one of the major deities, or kami of Shinto. She is also portrayed in Japan's earliest literary text, the Koji. So Shinto does not have a well-defined canon of scriptures. They don't have anything really like a Bible or sacred text. The holy books, if there are holy books... Um, they are called holy books, but they're in a different nature. They are the Kojiki, or Records of Ancient Matters, 712 CE, and the Nahonji, or Chronicles of Japan, 720 CE. So Shinto is primarily found in Japan, like I've said throughout this video, where there are about 100,000 public shrines, although practitioners are also found abroad. Numerically, it is Japan's largest religion, the second being Buddhism. Most of the country's population takes part in both Shinto and Buddhist activities, especially festivals, reflecting a common view in Japanese culture that the beliefs and practices of different religions need not be exclu exclusive. So it seems even though they sort of separated the Buddhists from the Shinto, now they're sort of like saying, hey, why not we, why not let's just let's be friends? <laughs> so they, they sort of worship together at this point. So it is thought that if there was one single broad definition of Shinto that it could be put forward, it would be that Shinto is a belief in kami. That's the whole central idea uh, you know, behind the, the religion, the supernatural entities at the center of the religion. Like I said, they're like nature beings, like the, like the sun or whatever. I don't have all the list of all the different types of kamis, but I'm sure that there are probably many and they're associated with different shrines in different places and different parts of nature, I would, I would say. So... Shinto encompasses doctrines, institutions, rit rituals, and communal life based on kami worship. The term Shinto was often used in reference to kami worship and related theologies, rituals, and practices. Several institutions and practices now associated with sh Shinto existed in Japan by the 8th century. Some scholars have argued that Shinto as a distinct religion was essentially invented during the 19th century in Japan's Meiji era. 
So in other words, it's kind of like, when did it start? Well, you know, there are things that even go back, like I said, to 300 BC. So it's just been going on through the culture for millennia. So Enoka Nabata, in Enoki, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it, Nobutaka stated that Shinto cannot be considered as a single religious system that existed from the ancient to the modern period. While the historian Kurododa Toshio noted that before modern times, Shinto did not exist as an independent religion. So, in another concept associated, you know, with Shinto and Buddhism is the samurai warriors who pledge loyalty to their lords and are willing to die for them, and their honor depends on how well they served. So again, as a wrap up, you know, there really is no moral code for, that's pretty much considered the, you know, the prevailing view in Shinto, there really is no moral code, and there certainly is no real scriptures advocating any moral code, um, and they do not believe in after death, um, and so obviously they don't believe in any sort of judgment. Um, so I guess you could sum it up as, you know, as well that they, their view is do as you please. Pretty much, it seems like that to me. That's just my evaluation from that kind of um, ideology. But anyway, so that's Shinto, and I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, I sure learned a lot. I learn a lot in each video that I do, and uh, I hope you do too. And again, there before you end, if you're still here, <laughs> There's an opportunity to sub subscribe down there. It'll bring more visitors here. And again, my music, if you want to go to the About page on this channel and just see those links, and you can get, catch up on every aspect of my music there. So thanks again for watching, and have a lovely day.